Good afternoon, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, going to put out an, another video this afternoon. Uh, this one's not going to be on uh, a particular aspect of horsemanship. Not going to be a video on cigars. It's going to be just a uh, just of a philosophy logic talk video. I am smoking a cigar. Uh, it's actually a Camacho Triple Maduro. Maduro is Spanish for mature. And uh, the longer that the leaves are allowed to uh, cure, to ferment, the darker, richer, stronger they get. And usually, uh, like a lot of Maduro cigars, they'll have the wrapper on the outside will be Maduro. Uh, but they'll have something else inside. But a triple Maduro is the filler, the binder, and the wrapper are all out of Maduro tobaccos. So it makes for a very rich, um, very strong, potent cigar. Every once in a while, I kind of like them. Um, I just been on my mind lately. We've been a lot of turmoil the last couple of weeks on the news. Been a lot of turmoil the last several years. And, uh, and I'm going to touch on a couple of things that are maybe political, but I'm not talking politics. I don't, I'm not going to knock whoever you vote for. I don't care if you're red. I don't care if you're blue. I don't care if you're so in the middle, you're purple. I don't care. I'm not knocking your politics. Okay. This is so much bigger than politics. This is you as a person. You are bigger than this country's politics. Um, but there's been a lot of turmoil lately um, due to these terrible, tragic shootings, especially the, the one that just happened in Uvalde. Um, but it's triggered the talking heads on both sides. Um, on both sides... I think that butterfly likes my cigar. Um, the right and the left. And both of them are using this uh, for political points. And it's just a, it's a rotten thing to do. It's a rotten thing to do, both sides. Um, and so they're pointing fingers. People are, point, people are always pointing fingers. Um, it's the government's fault. I can't pay my bills because Putin has invaded the Ukraine. I can't pay my bills because Biden has shut down our oil reserves and our um, oil leases and fuel prices are through the roof. Uh, I can't pay my bills because the price of everything has gone up. Um, my children are coming home and they've got these rotten attitudes and they've got these crazy ideas because the teachers in the school are teaching uh, CRT or, or teaching um, sex education to kindergartens or teaching this, and it's their fault this. And, and uh, we, uh, I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't want to do right. I, I'm, just, I'm tired of it because the, the pastor of the church or the people are hypocrites and, and this and that. And we blame everybody in the world for everything that's going on. But our life situation predominantly is our fault. It's our fault. Mom and I raised seven children. Those children were not birthed to the state. They were not birthed to the public school system. Their responsibility was given to us. The responsibility for their education the responsibility for their mental state of mind, the responsibility for the balance of their emotional balance and well-being, the responsibility for their physical safety and their health. It was all us. It did not belong to the school. It did not belong to the government. It belonged to us. Our children are grown, as seven children, and they're all, all balanced, profitable, honest, godly, hardworking uh, people that we're proud of, we're very proud of. The public system didn't do that. The government didn't do that. And the church didn't do that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, my children are gone, and it's my wife and I. 
my wife's safety is my responsibility. It is not the responsibility of the state government of whatever state we're in. It's not responsibility of the police. It is not the responsibility of the district attorney. It is not the responsibility of the NRA. It's my responsibility. So quite frankly, I don't care what the laws are. I mean, to the point, the laws, to a degree, don't take this too far, but to a degree, the laws don't matter anymore. Because the people who write the laws don't follow the laws. The people who enforce the laws don't follow the laws. The judges ignore the laws. The district attorneys ignore the laws. As it applies to them. And so ultimately in the end, regardless of what the law is, regardless of what's on the book somewhere, regardless of what the government says, I'm going to protect my wife physically and I'm going to see that we have the means and the experience and knowledge and the education to protect ourselves because it's not the responsibility of the police to protect us. And it wasn't the responsibility of armed school teachers to protect my children in school. If I look at the public school system today and I look at what's coming out of that school system, the complete lack of education, the complete lack of morals, the complete lack of a sense of responsibility, a complete lack of a sense of civic duty, a complete lack of of safety and I put my child in that environment and something happens to that child mentally, emotionally, or physically, it's my fault. It's my fault. You need to stand up and be a man. There ain't many of us left, but stand up and be a man. If you can't pay your bills, it's your fault. Now that's harsh. And there are, there are rare circumstances where that's not so. But for the most part, if you made foolish and unwise and irresponsible financial decisions, that's your fault. It is not the government's fault to forgive your student loan debt. It's been clear for several years that a college education is not the best way to go out and make a lot of money. But we decide to go get a big student loan, go to college, party and drink and sleep around and get a degree that is either going to be obsolete in five years or was obsolete 200 years ago and go out and try to get a job and we can't even make a living, much less pay back our student loan debt. So we stand there and wring our hands and demand that the government is responsible for it and they forgive our debts and we don't pay it. We decide we've got to have that vacation, we've got to have that jet ski, we've got to have this and we've got to have that. So we run up our credit cards and then when there's a war breaks out around the world and there's not enough wheat coming into this country and fuel prices and food prices wrote, then we wring our hands and we point at Putin and say it's Putin's fault that we can't pay our bills. No, it's our fault we can't pay our bills because we were irresponsible with our money. We blame Biden for fuel prices. Well, fuel prices are high and that is Biden's fault. But if I don't have the money to go ahead and flow with the fuel prices being high because I have spent irresponsibly, that's not Biden's fault. That's my fault. We're tearing ourselves apart. We are tearing ourselves apart in this country because everybody is blaming everybody for everything. The left is blaming the right. The right is blaming the left. The atheist is blaming the Christian. The Christian is blaming the atheist. Straights are blaming the gays. Gays are blaming the straights. Blacks are blaming the whites. Whites are blaming the blacks. And what everybody needs to do is turn around and look in the mirror and look at themselves. The problems in your life are your own dang fault. And so the answer to fixing the problems in your life are in your own dang hands. The responsibility for the well-being of your family, your wife, your husband, your children, 
are yours. Are yours. If you can't make enough money, this country has more open jobs than ever before. Get off your high horse and go out and get a job. Get two jobs. Get three jobs. They're out there. We went in Cracker Barrel yesterday to get a bite to eat. The restaurant was half empty and there was a 20 minute wait line because they had two waitresses taking care of the whole dang restaurant. Had a big sign out front said we're hiring. You want a job, you can get a job. You can get two or three jobs. You can pay your debts off. You can pay your credit cards down. You can pay for the fuel to do what needs to be done. But it takes guts. It takes a sense of response. It takes a backbone. It takes men and women with the bark on. Quit pointing the finger, look in the mirror, and go get it done. Make the hard decisions, make the sacrifice, and fix stuff. And take care of your kids. Take care of your wife. And take care of yourself. And quit expecting somebody else to do it. We've got to create a good life for ourselves. And in doing so, we only have to make sure of three things. You got to make sure that you do right by your God. And there's, let me rephrase that. Make sure you do right by God. Make sure you do right by your fellow man. And make sure you do right by yourself. And take care of those around you. All right? A little bit strong, a little bit harsh today, but I think some people need a swift kick in the pants today. And I was in the mood to do it. All right? So, click like, share if somebody needs to hear this. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, click on that subscription bell. YouTube is shadow banning me, so I'm not showing up in a lot of feeds anymore. So if you want to continue to get content that comes out of here, maybe after this you won't want to get any more content. That's all right. That's up to you. I felt like it needed to be said, and I said it. And we'll let the chips fall where they lay. All right? So this is Dwayne, and we'll catch you next time. Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Ranger School. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on here, it seems like. Uh, you might feel like I've dropped off the face of the world, and I kind of did for a bit. And uh, so we're going to do another video today, but I want to catch everybody up and let you know what's what's been going on. Um, the uh, As those who are on here pretty regular, as you know, we were scheduled to go to Florida, Mama and I, and do a week-long ride down there. So we were going to leave here on the 18th and head down. And, uh, and on the 17th, we were going to make a video laying out all of our gear and packing and what we were doing. And we were going to do a video on that. We said we would. Well, we got up Thursday morning on the 17th, and we're stirring around and making coffee and making plans, getting ready to make that video. And... I got a telephone call from Kentucky from my mom and she said they had taken my daddy in the hospital and and, uh, and then she started crying and asked me if I if I could come up. Uh, well when when your mom calls crying and asks if you can come home, you go home. That's what you do. And so I grabbed I finished getting dressed and grabbed a duffel bag and threw it in the truck and it's about a four hour drive up there and hit the road and uh, went up, went up to the hospital. And my dad's had congestive heart failure for a lot of years, uh, a lot of years. And, uh, and this was just the, the end. Um, and so he was in the hospital for a couple days and then they told him that the right half of his heart had just completely shut down, it was done. And there wasn't anything anybody could do, so we, we took him home to hospice. And so I spent 10 days, my mom and myself and my three younger sisters, and just pretty well around the clock watching him on hospice. And then on, uh, on Monday the 27th, he passed. Uh, he passed away. He was 76 years old. Had lived a very very good life, very honest life, very hard working life, man with a very good reputation, uh, a man with a legacy. And, uh, and, and so we uh, had the funeral on this 
Thursday. Today is February. I don't even know what today is. I think it's the fourth. Uh, but on the second, we we had his funeral, and then I spent another day up there getting everything in order for mom, and uh, and then arrived back down here last night. And so it's been a it's been a busy time. There's been you know uh, several inquiries on Rumble and about hey man you were going to make a a uh, a video on that new rifle where you at and and uh, and all all good natured stuff and but we've been out of pocket for a bit and and there's going to be some I've got a lot of stuff on my heart and on my mind about things I've learned from my dad over the years that I want to share uh, or next some of the next podcast or videos one or the other uh, but I'm not really not really ready for that yet so we're not going to do that today but I just wanted to catch I just wanted to catch everybody up um, yeah. so I, I guess catch up time here um, I've had several over on the podcast side and this is going to be posted on the podcast as well as YouTube uh, I've gotten several, been contacted by several fellows wanting me to come and and to be on their podcast. Uh, I did one, but it just, everything happened to fall out and had all, already scheduled it. Uh, when this thing with my dad came up, I don't like to unschedule, break schedules. So my dad, when my dad passed away, um, and I drove down the day before the funeral and recorded that podcast with someone who who has all the technology uh, and then drove back up for the funeral and won't be doing that anymore uh not saying i won't be doing podcasts but i've just been pushing just running too hard we got to get this school moved out to wyoming the end of this by the end of this month so i've got a month to get it set up before classes start and uh, so i'm just i'm stretched really thin right now so um, so I, I'm not, we're pretty much everything except for these videos and the podcast and, uh, and getting this school set up for this upcoming season is, uh, except for that, everything else is just going to have to wait. It's, it's on hold. Okay. But appreciate, I appreciate everybody's patience and, and understanding. Uh, I want to talk about something today. And uh, it has nothing to do with what happened in the last week or last two weeks. It's just a subject that's been on my mind. A subject that I feel like a lot of people need. Um, I'm pretty sure that you've messed up. Now, the reason I'm pretty sure that you've messed up is because you're a human. All right, and we're all humans. Now you have either messed up, or one day you're going to mess up, or somebody else is going to mess up that you are attached to. And uh, so this is going to apply to you from one side or another today, yesterday, or tomorrow. And uh, so. If you hear this and you listen to this today and you're like, that's not really applicable to me today, file it away. It'll either help you help somebody else in the future or it'll be there when you need it in the future. All right? So you've messed up. Now what? Now I don't know what your mess up is. Um, you might have you cheated on, on somebody. You might have uh, you might have messed up at work. You might have drove home drunk and gotten a wreck, uh, or at least got stopped and got a ticket. You might have done something very bad and very human, and now it's eating you up. It's eating you up, and it's about to destroy you. So you messed up. Now what? What do you do now? Where do you go from here? What uh, is is there is there a tomorrow? Is there a tomorrow? 
Well, yes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay some things out for you. All right. If you've messed up, the very first step, the very first thing that you've got to do is you've got to stop. Whatever it is you did, don't do it no more. I shouldn't even have to say that, um, but that's the first thing. You know, it's, it's such a thing these days for somebody to do something wrong and say, I'm sorry, and go back and do it again, and say, I'm sorry, and go back and do it again. Uh, after a while, you get the feeling they, they weren't really sorry. They were never sorry to start with. There's a big difference between being sorry I did something and being sorry I got caught. Uh, and uh, there's a big difference between not wanting to do something and not wanting to get caught doing something. All right? So for you to get past this and get through this, what it is, first thing you have to do is you got to stop doing it. You have to quit. Now, some things I, I understand. Uh, some things are, they're chemical, all right? If you're um, alcohol addicted or it involves drugs, um, sometimes you need help. Gambling, all right? You went to Vegas and you spent your wife and yours life saving and, and they gambled away the house mortgage and the co college tuition for the kids and whatever. You may need some help. <coughs> Excuse me, been fighting a cold for two weeks. But that's fine. That's part of quitting. But you quit. All right? Uh, if you're cheating, stop. Just stop. You say, well, I feel, I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel. Feelings and morality are not the same thing. We're not Clintons. We do not deal in situational ethics. We stop doing what is wrong because it's wrong we don't stop doing it because we stop feeling a certain way about doing it and you want it and you want to do it but you get to the place where you're sick and tired of hurting those around you you're sick and tired of being that person and you stop because stopping is the right thing to do and until you stop nothing else counts it doesn't count it doesn't matter it doesn't count so you stop, all right, whatever it is. Second, you own it. Your decision is your decision. And again, this whole situational ethics, um, this, well, the situation makes it okay if I go ahead and do this. We look for excuses. There's no excuse. Well, yeah, but no, there's no yeah, buts and there's no excuse. There is no excuse. There is absolutely no excuse for getting behind the wheel of a car if you've had a drink. None. There's Ubers, there's taxis, there's friends, there's two dang feet. There is no excuse. There's no excuse for cheating on a significant other. None. Well, they're cold and they're distant, so? Well, they cheated on me, so? They did something that to you is despicable, so you're going to turn around and use that excuse to do it back? Congratulations. You just descended to the level of that what you hate. There's no excuse. Own it. As long as you say, well, yeah, I did it, but I did it because of this. Man up. I, am, I know there's other people other than men, but I talk to the men, and if you're a woman and this applies to you, bless you. You're welcome, but it's just for my linear thought, it helps me, all right? Man up, all right? Just man up. I did it. It was me. Like the old spiritual hymn in church, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I did it. Doesn't matter what they did. Doesn't matter how I was feeling. Doesn't matter how bad my day at work was doesn't matter who was texting me, doesn't matter who was calling me, does not matter who's in the White House, does not matter who's in the doghouse, it doesn't matter. If you did wrong, you did it. Own it. Own it. All right? You'll not get past it until you own it. You cannot get over it. You cannot get victory over it. You cannot get past it unless it's yours. And it's not yours unless you own it. Okay, 
Um, so no excuses, no blame, except for yourself. You did it. All right. Second, admit it to others. You admit it to yourself. You own it. Go and confess it and apologize. All right. It doesn't just have to be cheating. It doesn't have to be infidelity. It could be anything. All right. You're at work. You're driving a company truck, forklift, a tractor. <coughs> Excuse me. You run it into a ditch. You break it. All right. Nobody knows who was out driving that. Nobody knows who did it. You know who did it. Go to the boss and say, look, that was me. I did that. Well, ha what happened? I was texting while I was driving and I wasn't paying attention. I did it. Now, you might lose your job. All right? You may walk out of that office without a job. But you'll walk out of there with a backbone and some self-respect. It'll be easier for next time for you to stand up, man up, and admit it. I did it. And I'm sorry. I wish I had not done it. But I cannot deny I did do it. And I apologize. And whatever my punishment is for it, I'll take it. Whatever my punishment is for it, I will take it. I will deal with the consequences of my action. Now, on a side note here, there's this, there's this very foolish thought, very foolish saying going around out in the world that uh, love means not having to say I'm sorry. You put that garbage out of your head, all right? A close, true friend today is very precious. It's very hard to find. A, a soulmate, a lover, a true one is very precious, very hard to find. They are to be protected. They are to be treasured. They are to be taken care of. And when you wrong them, if there's anybody on this planet you owe an apology to, it's the person closest to you. The person who stands beside you the tightest. They are the ones you owe the apology to the most. Because they are the ones you owe the most to. Alright? Confess it. And apologize for it. Make it right. You say, well, that's going to be awfully costly. Yeah. But listen to me. If you don't make it right, the cost that you're going to pay is going to be much, much worse to the degradation of your soul and the complete wiping out of your manhood and your self-respect, your dignity. All right? Confess it, apologize for it, and make it right, whatever it takes. Was that it? No, that's not it. Forgive yourself. When you've gone through and you've done what needs to be done, and you've made it right, as right as you can make it, to everyone that you need to make it right to. And you don't need to make it right to everybody. You didn't harm everybody. But those you need to make it right to, you've done that. And you've left it behind. Now forgive yourself. Because ultimately in the end, we're all just humans. We're all just flesh and blood. And we live on a planet that's made up of a system that is setting out to destroy us setting out to destroy us you can't l listen fellas you and no excuse all right but you cannot stop by the grocery store to pick up a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread for the wife on the way home from work without having to walk down that aisle at the checkout with the magazines down the side with the pictures on it some of you live in cities the billboards are horrendous if you're still foolish enough to have TV and watch TV, they sell everything from cars to toothpaste using sex. You bombard yourself with it. They bombard you with it. And, uh, and it's there. And if we're not cautious and we're not careful, we will fall. We're surrounded by technology. Everybody texts us, the Facebook thing, whatever. You're going to text. All right, and you get in the habit and everything's so wound up and you're going to text and you're going to drive. All right, you're going to fall. You're a human. There's no excuse for falling. 
It seems like a paradox, but it's not a paradox, okay? But you've got to forgive yourself, all right? The past is the past. And you've got to leave the past in the past. And until you can walk away from the past, you cannot have a future. You cannot live in the past and the future at the same time. Now, you've got to bury the past. The past has to die, and it has to be buried. But once it's dead and buried, you have to move on. And there's nothing in this life that will destroy you faster than you being unable to forgive yourself for your wrongdoings. Now, it's hard when those we love and those around us cannot forgive us for our wrongdoings. That's hard enough. But when you cannot forgive yourself, that's not survivable. That's not survivable. All right? So, walk away. When you finish doing what is right, and you finished making everything right, walk away. The you that was you yesterday is not the you that is you today, unless it is. The you that is you yesterday is not the you that is you today, unless it is. But when it is not, when you have faced that man in the mirror and you have dealt with the yesterdays and you have dealt with everything and you have held the funeral and you have buried the past and you have buried the you that was that man in the past, that is no longer you. All right? Today's a new day. Today's a new you. And so do not destroy yourself over a man that no longer exists. All right? You got to move on. You got to move on. And if you've done what's right, uh, to a degree, you have to make everybody around you let you move on. Now, sometimes family, sometimes friends, they won't, they won't let go of the past. They won't let you forget the past. And sometimes as you walk away from the past, you got to walk away from those who will not let you leave the past. You do what you got to do, but you survive. You survive to become a better man, a better man, a stronger man, a wiser man, a more tempered man, and a better man. Okay? So, yeah, you messed up. But it's not the end of the world that it seems. And it's not the end of the world that those would try to uh, make it seem. All right? I just really on my heart this week, and I just really wanted to encourage, and just really wanted to see if I could help somebody with that. Uh, what do we got going on here today? Um, Camacho, Connecticut. Nice, really smooth, um, easy going cigar. And, uh, and so I just share that with you. Folks getting on there, folks still get on there and say, I don't understand the cigar thing. Well, let me explain it to you uh, in a way that you can understand, all right? My channel. My channel, my thoughts, my heart, my words, my likes. Okay? And uh, can't explain it any better than that. So I hope you guys have a good one. And uh, where I'm going to set out, I got Jesse's back down here. He came down here to be with me uh, for Pa. Uh, my dad, everybody called him Pa. We'll be talking about Pa, uh, but he's here. So while I got a little help with the video, I'm going to go ahead and try and set up and, and see if we can't get that rifle video over on Rumble. Okay? And uh, so we, uh, we wish you guys all the best. I have a heart for you. I know sometimes it seems like in this world nobody cares. Um, but, buddy, somebody cares, okay? Somebody does care. So just keep going. Don't quit. And just keep fighting through. And, uh, and you'll make it. You'll make it. All right? We'll catch you guys next time.